Act. And in discharging their duties, they cannot lose sight of the injunction in Article 1 of the Constitution that governance is for the welfare and benefit of the people of this country. It's very important. The preamble of the Constitution says that we must all strive for the social cohesion of the Republic of Africa. You're not suggesting that the EC is in violation of these tenets, are you? Well, I will make the points clear and leave the decision to your viewers to make. Let me start by saying that our present uh, 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 journey to establish Ghana as a democratic multi-party state started in 1992. So the EC as presently const constituted came into existence in 1992, pursuant to the constitution. It was called INEC, the Interim National Electoral Commission, until the constitution established as the Electoral Commission of Ghana. Now, since 1992, we have been building a register because. Article 42 of the Constitution is very clear. Article 42 of the Constitution says that every Ghanaian citizen, underlined, every Ghanaian citizen of 18 years old and of sound mind has the right, underlined, right to vote and is entitled to be registered vote in public elections and referendum. So, the, a, to determine who a Ghanaian citizen is, you have to assemble an aggregation of documents. Because the Citizenship Act of Ghana established a criteria for determining the, the, who is a citizen of Ghana. And one important criteria is a person is a citizen of Ghana if he was born before 6th of March 1957 to parents or grandpa grandparents wow. who were born, not citizens, who were, because there was, no, there was no Ghana, who were born within the territorial confines of the present day Ghana. So, you need to take cognizance of those people. And to be able to establish their citizenship, you need a birth certificate. Yes. To show that, well, they were born and their parents were, bo were born within the confines. Yes. So this is one class of people. Another class of people are people who were born in areas that did not have the birth and death registry, but they had churches. And they were baptized in those churches. And the churches gave them what? Baptismal certificates. Yes, baptismal certificates. Because Ghana is a developing country. So you need those documents to establish. Even before the National Identific uh, Identi Identification Authority was established, in or between uh, 1969 and 1971, Buzia had started the Citizens Identity Card. People still have it today. So you need people to demonstrate that they are Ghanaians. Ghanaians because they have been identified as Ghanaians. You have those of us who are privileged to have gone to school and who are public servants or who travel. So you need passports. Now today, we are re-establishing the National Identity Register. So we have the National Identification Authority. They are issuing cards. You need those cards. Now, so in 1992, and then there are people who did not have the benefit of education, who were born to parents who never had the benefit of education, who have no indication... So who never had birth certificates, it's, who never had baptismal certificates, who never had passports. So you need people 
and it was in the even the old law of the NIA. You need assembled men or chiefs to come vouch for them that they are Daniels. So that's how you collect evidence of citizenship in a country in a developing country like mm. Ghana. Mm. Then we had the 1992 register, it was a black and white. The picture was black and white. Then after the 1992, there was no picture. There was a picture, black and white. 1992. Yes, black and white. There was it was no picture. In, the picture came beyond yeah. 96. Yeah, the, the picture came after. Okay, yeah. so there was no, so there was the no pictures picture. came well, after. So, so if there was no picture, well, I, I can't immediately remember. There was no picture. Okay, if there was no picture, so we collected. So we needed a picture. So we, when we were transiting from no picture, assuming, but I'll have to go and check, mm. to a picture... We needed those who had evidence that they were voters. We needed them to submit their voter ID card as a proof of evidence that they are Ghanaians. To transit, to migrate them onto the voter ID card of the picture. So that was. You're still, you're still laying the foundation for the basis of the resistance. Well, right? well yes. The Attorney General even refused to allow the picture id card well, well someone well, well please, please, please 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 so please, the, please. then we went we are, the, we are past there we are past laying the foundation, lay your foundation. Lay your then foundation. when we were transiting from the black and white to color you needed the black and white onto the color when we were transferring from the color to biometric you needed the voter register to transit tra uh, transit from color register to a biometric register. And that is why in the Abu Ramadan case, the Chief Justice then, Georgina Wood, said an old voter's identity card is the best prima facie evidence of eligibility that has been argued. Well, I, I don't think that we are in court. I'm quoting a decision, a dictum of the judge. The judge said it has been argued. It has, not it has been argued. <laughs> I've, I've read the judgment. Not it has been argued. Very well, you go. I've read it. Foundation. And there's go no foundation that go it has on. been argued. Mm. Go on. That it is the best from my fashion evidence of citizenship onto the voter ID card, onto a new voter ID card. Now, we find the MPP. They come into being, and I... I want to tell you, you what mean that's it, about. They come into office. office. I mean, because they everything. come into office. And I was very <laughs> encouraged when I heard that my colleague lawyer, Bobby Asamoah, was coming to the place. Because it's a right to vote, it's a fundamental right to vote. And because it's a right to vote, every opportunity must be given to people. To get onto the so you don't put in place systems that will seek to disenfranchise people. people. That's the basis of the whole. You don't the, put the in whole. place systems that will seek to disenfranchise people. And when I see lawyers arguing the way some lawyers are arguing, then I have great fear. Look, so the 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 first that's the first legal point mm. that look the the mechanisms for determining citizenship of this country has been constructed in such a way that it will operate to disenfranchise people. That's what, that's what that's you what, think the Electoral Commission is, is doing? Yes, that's what mm. it's doing. Because, ah, the National Identity Authority is still registering. They have Eastern Region to cover. They have Eastern and Region, that, they have Eastern that, Region to cover. Mm. They, have, they have said they are going to do a mop-up. Which law or which practice will embolden a state institution to put on its CI or document a condition precedent for registration onto the voter ID card. That has not been completed. A card that has not been completed. A registration process that has not been completed. It's not absurd. What about if they fail to complete? What happens? Two. My brother, today as we sit, myself and Bobby mm. are mm. members of parliament. If there is a by-election in Parliament today, which voter ID card are we going to use? 
the current voter ID card. The only reason why they are, the Electoral Commission is embarking on this absurd path is for the re-election of Nana Kofado. But that's not fair because the Electoral oh, Commission is not operating to ensure that one to particular political divide wins. So. Mm. Let me demonstrate to you what it, why it is so. Number one, you have an existing document. You know the voter ID card is a legal instrument. Mm. It's a document. It's legal. It has its basis in the Constitution. The, the, the institution that issued the voter ID card is still the same institution that is compiling the register or that intends to compile the register. That institution says that for the purposes of keeping the status quo, we are going to use the old register. But for the purposes of 2020 elections, we are going to use a new register. What exactly does that mean? That means... Which is the status quo? The status quo is anything that happens between now and, two, and 7 December, which requires elections. That's speculative. That's what is speculative. That's, that's speculative. That's speculative. No, no, no. speculative. Ah, do we have any other... The reality we please, have please, now please, is please, that... Please, please, please. Please, please. 2020 is please, ahead please. of us. No, please, please, please. <laughs> You are too. You are simplifying this argument. Let me tell game. you, it's speculative. It's not speculative. Which register do we have now? Which register, Babia Samo, do we have now? So you are presuming. So that no, no, no. Which register do we have now? So when we get. There, so if there is a, a by election, which register are we going to use? There is, is it no not common sense? There is no by election. No, is it not common sense? Register is about to be compiled. No, is it not there common is sense? No by election. Is it not common sense? It's a speculative. It's just common it's sense. Common it's just sense. common sense. It's totally speculative. No, it's just common sense. It's now, so, speculative. So you see, <laughs> this electoral commission, first of all, has put on the register a national ID card, which is not okay. So it's I, my argument that if there's a by election. We will use the new current register is speculative. Meanwhile, the electoral commission, a state institution, putting on the a, a, on the CI a requirement a requirement for an NIA card is also a matter of law. <laughs> it's before this parliament. Yes. So 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 so. Honourable, so, so, honourable, I need you to I need you to wrap up no, no, the basis of the resistance the because because law. we're 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 talking about the reason why the so, resistance has so, been so, stiff so, and so, consistent so, and the, pushing the, towards the deadline the of June of and July. <laughs> opposition is stiff and strong because what they are simply doing doesn't accord with common sense and good reasoning. It doesn't accord. And the cards that they are using, the, the primary documents that they have stated to be used for registration, I've just demonstrated that the National ID card, National Identity Authority is still issuing. They have not completed the process. They have not uh, uh, verified the process, the cards, and completed and certified that they have issued. Meanwhile, it's a requirement. Mm. They have, as we speak today, they say they have issued uh, about 7,000 cards or 7 million or what? Cards, 7 million cards. The voter, uh, the passport, the passport, which is also a requirement, is limited to less than, I mean, less people, probably, probably about 2 million people in this country. And the people, the pro propensity of, of the people having the voter ID card and the national identification card is higher. So it means that one person can have both. So the fact that you have 2 million passports and 7 million voter ID card says nothing. It does, says nothing about the number of people who can get onto the register. Now, to fill a voter a, a passport, to fill for a passport, you require to demonstrate that you have a birth certificate. You also require, or if you don't have a birth certificate, you require to demonstrate that you have a voter ID card. It is the basis, the primary documents to entitle you to a passport. Now, the Electoral Commission says, oh, no, 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 we don't want, want the birth certificate. We don't even want the voter ID card. We want the passport. You see the absurdity in the reasoning? Why are they doing all these things? They are doing all these things because somehow they have come to the fatally observed, uh, observed position that there are 
the electric, the uh, register is bloated. So absurd. They have never, they only say it, they have never demonstrated the, how, how the uh, electric uh, register is bloated. And we say, look, why will you invest? 1992, we invested money in compiling the register. Oh, we have since been investing money in the compilation of the register. Even up to just last year, we invested a lot of money in the compilation of the register. Why are we throwing it away? The EC still says that his um, equipment are obsolete and they need new ones. And well, we're not talking about effective. equipment. Mm. We're not talking about equipment. So don't get confused by the MPP and the <laughs> electoral commission. <laughs> we're, not, we're not talking about <laughs> equipment. <laughs> we're talking <laughs> about... Don't get confused. <laughs> we're talking about data. I'm not confused. <laughs> we're talking about data. <laughs> Where's been demonstrated to you why you shouldn't be confused? You have a phone. I have a phone, iPhone 10 Plus. The chip that I have contains data. If my iPhone is out of date, I mean, my, my Samsung is out of date, I throw away the equipment. I change the equipment. I don't change the data. What we are arguing is that the compilation of a register those on the register is data. Argument. Right. It's so, not equipment. So, on of Zeni, so, so the key point now that is that is data. The, resist the resistance will continue. So, mm -hmm. I, is, is, well, the the resistance NDC, is, going is to the NDC ever going to make the Electoral Commission uh, come to that point of doing its job and going ahead with the conduct of this year's uh, election? When you have an Electoral Commission, the commissioners of who are wearing the jerseys of one of the players in the game and the flanks <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the pitch are occupied by officers of the commission. You will have to think twice. You have such distrust for You have the, to think twice before you commission. enter into a game where the commissioner has a red card wearing the jersey so of one of So what condition would you... Uh, take part in the election? Would, would, uh, is your party going to take part in the election? Well, our party will advise itself when it comes to that. I mean, I have been told that we are so spiritually attached to the register. And we, indeed we are. Because that is the basis. So you might boycott the election? That is the basis of entering and competing in, elect in elections. You might boycott When the an electoral register is compromised in such a way as to limit the opportunity available to other parties to contest evenly in the election, you have to have worry. So you may, you may boycott the elections. If when we get there, we'll like cross it. But so we will resist. And I'm saying that we will resist until the population. No, you will resist until there's no election? with our blood. That's, that's, that's serious. That's yes, 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 I'm telling you. So, Honorable Bobby and Samuel, I need a quick reaction. I know that it's, it's not fair for me to say, react to everything Honorable Inusa Fusseini has said, but you've seen the opposition to the compilation of the voters register. The, the reasoning have been given by the uh, both parties, the, the parties who are against the compilation, civil society groups. It's not like only NDC is opposed to the compilations. And reasons have been given. But the MPP is for the compilation of the new voters register for reasons you can tell us. But hearing from Inusa Fosseini, he makes quite a, a number of clear senses and reasoning, which we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget. I mean, from the constitutional basis and the foundation he gave to the point that the Electoral Commission is seeking to eliminate the use of the uh, birth certificate, for example, and stick to national ID card and passports. And the national ID cards, not everyone has them. The passports, not everyone has them. It looks like the, the Electoral Commission is aware that many people might not be able to put their names on the voters register if it continues like that. Thank you very much. I will, first of all, let me say a very good morning to your viewers uh, who are listening and, and watching us this morning. And in particular, uh, let me uh, flute special greetings to my constituency. My honorable colleague uh, is not running again, 
So he doesn't have to go through the He doesn't motions. need the courtesies <laughs> of his constituents. So I have to do the courtesies. I do them properly. So I then turn constituencies watching, and I'm still yet to win my primaries, and I'm sure the primaries will come, and I'm sure the general election will happen. Mm. I'll take off from the last three sentences or two questions and a conclusion that uh, Honorable Binusa. First of all, you asked whether the NDC would allow the EC to do its work. There wasn't a clear answer. And then you asked whether the NDC would boycott the election. Again, there was no clear answer. And then he concluded by saying they would resist with their blood if necessary. Let it be clear. Under the 1992 Constitution, every political party organization beyond political party, civil society organization, has a right to an opinion. And that opinion can be canvassed as stridently as the organization wishes, with force, with vim, to the extent that you can have demonstrations, you can have press conferences, you can be on TV, on radio, traditional media, you can go to court. And interestingly, you can also boycott a process that you don't believe in. What you don't have liberty to do is to use violence to undermine the Constitution. No political party, and let us understand it this morning straight off the bat, that no political party, no organization in this country has a right to undermine our peace and stability with its self-imposition of violence on the system. When, when you are not entitled to justice, use violence to undermine the system. becomes the rule, resistance... Who determines injustice? Re resistance Who determines the injustice? The court? That is how... That is how... The only, injustice, for the the only injustice is determined with this document. But in the this is the document that rules all of us. And the only injustice is in this document. When we're fighting for... This document government. determines justice or injustice and it is in the Supreme Court. When we were fighting for independence, there was no, there was no justice. There was no document. So, 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 so now... When the Daniels were fighting the for independence, there was no document. There were documents. The new patriotic party... The born of 1844 the was a document. The new patriotic party has had three strikes. Three strikes under this constitution. Three strikes, as the baseball people say. Strike one was in 1992. When we had a presidential election separate from a parliamentary election. After the presidential election, the new patriotic party decided that we had been cheated. The new patriotic party decided there wasn't going to be a fair parliamentary election. So what did we do? We didn't pick up guns. We didn't shed blood. We didn't throw away the constitution we didn't agree with because this constitution was passed under desperately mysterious circumstances. And you are aware, on April 28th, 1992, we were forced to take on a constitution which included indemnity clauses and funny other clauses which you imposed on us. We took it. We didn't undermine the new constitution. What we did was that we boycotted the parliamentary election. So, so you're saying the NDC can choose to boycott rather than continue to resist openly in the media and other platforms in 2012. They have a right to resist everything. I'm saying that it ends at violence. They have a right to do anything, but it ends at violence. They cannot use violence to threaten the stability of this state, the peace of this wonderful nation, and undermine a process that everybody believes in. That's what I'm saying. In 2012, in 2012, hmm. when the MPP decided that we had been hard done by, in the election of 2012, we didn't pick up cudgels. We didn't pick up cutlasses. We didn't distribute guns. We went to the Supreme Court of Ghana. And for eight months, a president who were challenging even refused to come to court. Never stepped there once to even say good morning to the bench. The Supreme Court, and that is what this constitution says, so end it there. The Supreme Court decided that we were wrong and that the president should stay. We are in this studio today because 
responsible political party as we were, we accepted the verdict, even though the chief petitioner said he disagreed with the conclusion. Just as you accepted the verdict for an Akufuado winning by a million with the same voters registered. In 2016, in 2016, somebody even lost an eye in demonstrations against this, con uh, this constitution. And you are aware, Ms. Ante, mm. the agitation from 2012 right through to 2016. Yet, when finally the electoral commissioner decided that she was going to go ahead with the election with the old register we were disputing. We, the new patriotic party, accepted it and hunkered down and participated in the election and did quality job. And you won Messaging. the election by one million votes. Correct. So why do you, cha why do you have to please, support the change please, of the please, register? Please, please, please. You, uh, it was all over the place. We are educating people. Don't jump. Stay focused. Inu Safuseni says then that what? They will resist with their blood. And he starts from Article 42. They are already in court over Article 42. This hundious argument about one register. Then we have had one register since 1963. We probably have had one register since we started this, the this provincial, the this provincial, since we started the provincial. This is an uh, argument uh, of a senior caller. Don't make that argument. You are a lawyer. Please. The EC, please, 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 please. The EC has a duty to deliver the means by which you vote. A register. It's a duty. It's a constitutional duty. If you want to challenge it, take it to court. The voter, Article 42 gives you a right to vote. That right will be truncated if you don't have the duty of the EC in place. But you are not, you are not compelled by law to vote. You can boycott. You can boycott. It's an option. So when you asked whether the NDC will boycott if they are unhappy with the EC's duty to put in place a register, you asked a very solid question and they are able to answer. Now let's go forward to this business about the register and credibility and blah, blah, blah. Let me also make a few points there. Mm. He's talking about the NIA numbers. We also have the numbers. 10 million people, are they all NDC people? Are they all NDC people? We're not talking about NDC. Exactly. It's so the why is the NDC? What makes you think that those citizens don't have means of registration? Because I expect to the be a NDC right is insisting for other people who have means of registration. No. You I, I have expect to be a human right lawyer. Please, 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 please. I don't expect you it's to argue that about, way. It's not about. We are <laughs> looking at the political future and... It includes the rights of everybody in this country. It's not about human rights law. It's about, it's about the duty of the EC to deliver an election. And that duty, we should participate responsibly in getting it done. There are four means of, get, of getting on the register that the EC has proposed. It's in parliament now. He is going to be in that committee to debate it. I am in that committee. The EC says you can bring a passport. You can bring... A Ghana card. You can have a family member vouch for you. And you can have two others who are not your family. No, the family member is not there. Vouch no for family member vouch There are three. You have so, a, a, an ID card, so, a passport. So there a are means of getting registered. And the person who has to vouch for you actually needs to come with you to the registration center. That's, that's no, even that one. That's something I, I, else. I, I, let us look and at that, the that person I, should be a registered voter. the EC is, it, is their business. What it's would not my business. use to determine <laughs> what they have the person being a registered voter? before the committee voter. is what we will interrogate. Mm. And when the committee interrogates them, they will be there in committee. That is the due process. That is lawful. That is organized. That is within the confines of this constitution. So, so, so you don't think that the EC is making the process too cumbersome for people to get onto the register? With these I am requirements. not in a position you won't answer that question. to think beyond the EC you having think said that we're going to do it. To think whatever I think, whatever <laughs> I believe, once the EC has determined that it is going to deliver the register, it is my civic duty under this constitution to obey. 
Hey. I am not going to shed blood and destroy the state because my opinion is not what the EC is taking. And that is why the NDC is faulting all this country. The NDC in opposition has become the Electoral uh, uh, Commission. The NDC in opposition has become the Supreme Court. The NDC in opposition has become the conscience of this nation. The NDC in opposition is insisting that unless the whole of Ghana does what they insist, must be done, the country should die. You think the NDC is not compromising at all? Same as Listen the NDC is not the electoral commissioner mm. of the NDC era. This is a parliamentary report. 2015, December, special budget committee. I was in the parliament. He was. Page 5, paragraph 7.4. Following complaints, this is a Charlotte, Charlotte commissioner. Following complaints from some stakeholders on the quality of the voters' register, the Commission will take the requisite steps to ensure a credible register prior to the general elections. So that Commission accepted that the register was not credible. They accepted it was not credible. Now, listen to the kicker. Various means have been proposed by stakeholders and are currently under consideration. That exercise of cleaning the register never took place satisfactorily hey. it never did satisfactorily it and you won did. elections of it ah. you have got we had a parallel tabulation you are in government you are sitting down <laughs> thinking that everything was good we engaged on the basis of our lessons from 2013 what did you and tablet? we were alert what did you tablet? i participated right, in that election you are trivializing his presentation what did he tablet? He tabulated Parallel the tabulation the, from the police. What did you tabulate? Uh, 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 you where was your letter director? Look, look, you tabulated. You were standing the on platform C. C. And you thought that the election was lost. And those who were attacked. Please, let me make my argument. Let me make my argument. Let's see. What kind of argument is this? The peace and stability of this country is non negotiable. What kind of argument is this? Peace is an intrinsic, innate human value that we all pursue. It has no cost. Now, fast forward. That register that was discredited by Charlotte Osei herself, in, as far back as 2015, going into the 2016 election, that discredited register, you come to the report of the Special Budget Committee 2018. 2018. And the parliamentary committee listens to the chairperson of the EC, the new chairperson. The chairperson of the commission informed the committee that the BVRs and BVDs required for the registration of voters and for the conduct of elections have become obsolete as they have gone beyond their lifespan and needed to be replaced. Now, the argument about the register being obsolete, being necessary being new and all that were made long before Ooh. 2020 long before covid long before now highlights highlights of the electoral commission's budget in 2018 not the money but what was supposed to happen to that register as far back as 2018 and which will have to happen now if we are going to use the so-called old register there's no old register. Ah, thank you. you got to use the I'm current, glad you the accept current, that there is no, no old, old register. register. If you are going to use the That's what your people say. Your no, people no, say the old register. I'm not going to take the old register. I'm not going the old register. I'm not arguing like you are arguing. <laughs> because you're a lawyer, you should argue. For this purpose, for this purpose, I'm arguing as an obedient servant of Ghana, not a lawyer. No, no, no. We didn't come here to argue as lawyers. I was invited here as the director of communications for the new patriotic party. I have no doubt that you are arguing like Position of BVR kits, embedded laptop computer, webcam, fingerprint scanner, color printer, printer cartridges, power extension cord, plastic case. This is just the BVR kits. Mm. That's the biometric voter registration yeah. kits. It has other components. Now, scope of refer refurbishment. This is 2018. Cleaning and sorting the kits takes time. Replacement of mobile printers, new equipment. Replacement of external battery packs with new equipment. New flash drive and SD card. Consumables for printer. Replacement repair of laptop. Many of the laptops are beyond repair. 2018. Then it has the figures for repair. You know, those arguments have been made. 
isn't it? In 2019, I am going through the chronology. He chose to start from independence, proving citizenship. I'm telling you the, the, the journey the register has taken, has taken through the lawful channels. For which you support the comp yes! compilation. For which we the, have been pushing. For backing. which we have been pushing. And for which Charlotte accepted as far back as 2015 that the register was not credible. In the 2020 budget, EC proposed to replace the voters' register. It is clear that they all along were consistent with their position. When does this conspiracy, humongous conspiracy between the uh, uh, NPP, EC, NIA, when was it supposed to have started? Yesterday. When did the NPP realize that we had to sit in a secret dark room and conspire in order to win an election that us at now we have so desperate a situation with COVID. We conspired pre-COVID, during COVID or post-COVID. A responsible political party makes such arguments to the public. We sit here and talk about lawyers and non-lawyers. Please, let us look at it critically. One, cost. As we sit here, repairing the old register. I've already listed some of the items on the BVR. Mm. Cost money. It costs money. And does that mean that having procured new equipment at cost, you are going to abandon the new equipment and go back and procure old, obsolete equipment that is not being manufactured? And from where in this COVID era? Are you going to get that equipment from manufacture it where? Here in Ghana, repair the stuff with cello tape in Ghana. So, cost, whether you are using the existing stroke old, there will be cost. There will be cost. Mm. And in fact, it is going to be double cost because procurement processes have been invested in for the acquisition of the new one. But what is the cost of peace? Incalculable. Incalculable. So you cannot sit here and say that if the cost is not taken according to your notion of the existing new register with repairs and otherwise, you will resist it with your blood. No, he didn't say that. But that is what he said. He <laughs> said blood. Blood. He used the word blood. You see? You see? He said blood. You see, I, don't want to I haven't finished. I, I haven't finished. Struggle. I haven't finished. Okay. Mm. So we are headed on a path of double cost. As the NDC wants us to do now. Time. Time. The cost analysis impacts time as well. Because you still need to go back, engage the old vendors of the equipment who have all the proprietary rights and who have already told you that the equipment is obsolete and beyond its shelf life and it's not being manufactured. To find how they are going to restart a manufacturing process to replace the old laptops and things that cannot work. It's been refurbished twice. It was refurbished for uh, the DLE. It's refurbished for the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, referendum? Refer the by-elections? Yeah. The, 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 yeah, the referendum. The level elections. Which gave us 16 mm -hmm. uh, uh, regions. Are we saying that? Because of that, it will not be refurbished for this election. That election which will carry over 14 million people. It has to be in tip-top shape. Then you avoid the situation where Ama Bua, Honorable Ama Bua, had 500 people who were registered and a system failed and he was going to sue the EC, thinking that they deliberately left those people out. They didn't. So what happens if you use the old equipment and on election day, Emil Safuseni goes to his polling station and his name is not So, there. So it does appear to me that the... the Let the, me finish mm. the time argument. It's very important. So whether you use the existing stroke old register or the new one, you have a time constraint. Because there too, you have to import equipment which doesn't exist on the market anymore. You have to refurbish, clean your systems. Mm. I'll, give, you, I'll give you two minutes software, to wrap up. Mm. And you have to install mm. software. It's a time matter. And it will mean abandoning everything you've done up to now on the new register and going back to start a process. That probably is more time-consuming than what we think. So, if we have 
material that is available, that is in process, that is being brought to bear now. Why can't we be constructive in the face of COVID? We have a situation which has been imposed on us by force majeure, circumstances none of us believed would have happened. COVID. Pre-COVID, we had the luxury of engaging the NDC and arguing new, old, new, old, course, time, new, new. We were arguing. But during COVID, because we don't even know post-COVID. We don't know post-COVID. We don't know whether COVID is going to be eliminated, uprooted entirely before the world becomes normal, or we have to live with the new normal where we live with COVID. We don't know. But we know that if by December 2020 we don't vote, this way of life may collapse. But if we don't agree now, 7th January 2020, well, we will not agree. So a critical question will be whether there will be any agreement or consensus coming from both sides. Uh, several arguments. It doesn't have, depend on us several anymore. Several arguments have Steve, been Steve, it made. doesn't mm. depend on us anymore. That's the point I started with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't depend on us anymore. We can hold our opinion. We can go all the way. We can go to the Supreme Court. We can boycott. We have all those options. But we don't have an option of physically stopping the EC with violence. Right. Uh, this is still a key point. I'm Stephen Antti. I have Inuza Fuseni, Honorable Inuza of Hussaini and Honorable uh, Bobby and Samoa in the studio. We'll take a break here and when we return, uh, Inuza of Hussaini will uh, react to, it, to some of the issues that have been raised and you can clearly see that if we had the Electoral Commission here with us to answer some of the questions, it would have been great but we tried, uh, we were unable to get them to join our conversation. This is Key Points, please stay with us, we'll be right back. The compilation of the new voters register, critical issues that we have to be uh, uh, tuning our mind to will be the processes that will uh, the AC will follow in order to get that voters register. Uh, they need their targeting to raise about 17 million people. Honorable Fuseni raises issues uh, and uh, Yao Bobby and Samoa also responded. So Honorable, I, you, you, you heard the uh, re reaction to your commentary from uh, Yao Bobby and Samoa. Uh, critical for me is the continuous resistance which I've spoken about. You have not been able to tell us whether beyond the resistance you are going to take part in the elections or step back to allow the Electoral Commission to do its job. I mean, sincerely, we, we need a compromise position. What is that compromise position going to be for the NDC? The, the compromise position is for the Electoral Commission to, re to listen to the voice of reason. I'm not the only one saying that. And abandon that. the plans to I'm not the only and one the processes saying so already in place to Akotua compile Pao, the register. Akotua has said so. Kweku Baku, your fellow journalist, has said so. Uh, PC Afi, of, uh, Api Ofori has said so. Many men, many people of good reason have said we shouldn't embark on this path of self-destruction. That's the voice of wisdom. Now, Bobian Samos talks about boycotting the first, elect the first uh, uh, parliamentary election held in this country. Why was it boycotted? It was boycotted that because the MPP felt that the system that was in place in 1992 was unfair. Fair. Thank you. Is that not the same, Is that not the same situation, situation we so, have now? So, so if we boycott the system... If we boycott the elections because we think the system is unfair, what wrong have you committed? So are you going to boycott? If we boycott because we think it's unfair, what is our problem? So are you going to boycott? Why? I'm asking you. What's our yeah, problem? So are you going to boycott? So we don't want the blood. The MPP boycotted. We because didn't they share blood. Because they thought that, oh, didn't you resist? We boycotted. You resisted, you killed boycotted. people. Oh, please. In no? the, oh, the, please. The, 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 the oh, our please. first chairman oh, was please. burnt alive. Oh, please. We abandoned the parliamentary election and bent your chairman alive. You bent your alive you are going to rewrite the history of the Nigerian Two Constitution. We don't have enough time to discuss now. You are going to uh, go back so, to play, 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 distorted play. history. I'm not distorting history. If you boycott, let around, the nation know. I've been around for some time to know that the history of let this the country, nation know the history of this country that you will boycott the election. I know enough of the of what the MPP has done. We have both been there from the Matimehu. We have both been there. Let me Martin tell you. Let's just go into the coup d'etat. So let me tell you. The grandfather of coup d'etat. So I've said here. that. But someone makes the point. That for him, as a dutiful Ghanaian, he will support the Electoral Commission. Do what, whatever, whatever they want to do. But I thought that all of us have a duty to uphold the laws of this country. The laws of this country are that if any act is inconsistent with the Constitution, you have a duty to resist it. 
Yes. Go you to court. Resist it physically or go to court. Ah, yes. physically. Yes. Where? How, how yes. Can you resist you physically? go to what? You destroy the institutions if of state. Sitting in physically. My house, if Where I'm does he say that? My house, Where does he say that in the constitution? Any, without any offense. Where does he say that me? in the constitution? Without any offense by me, and I people come to arrest me without a warrant, I have oh. a duty to resist that arrest. Warrant. I have a duty to resist that. But that's but that's not the same. Yes. You talking about warrant? No. That's the. That's you're talking about privileges. privileges. You're talking about what privileges. What, what kind of example is that? We're talking about law. That's the law. I have a duty to resist an injustice. I have that duty. It's not here. I have that duty. And so, in Ghana, under the Constitution, it is the parent. It is the parent, the Constitution, citizenship. It is the parent that confers citizenship on the son mm. or, the, or the child. Mm. Under the EEC arrangement, the child will confer citizenship on the parent. Ask me how. How? If the child has an... Uh, before you get onto the register, you must have a national identity authority card or a passport. If your father never had that document or your mother never had that document and you, the child, by reason of being exposed to education, you have that document and you get onto the register, you can now vouch for your father. You can now confer citizenship on your father. That's not conferring citizenship. Yes. Ah. Oh, God. Auntie. You know, the Constitution the says that law. every citizen... He's the one who talks about law. That's law. <laughs> That's law. law. Every citizen. Law. How do you get onto the register? You, all, you can only you get onto the register right if you are a by citizen. By law, to become a citizen. You understand? Mm. You can only get onto the register if you are a citizen. And for you to... Be, if you don't have the documents, primary documents to establish your citizenship, Someone must vouch for you. Someone must say that you are a citizen. Mm. You get it? Mm. So if you, your grandfather or your father doesn't have the document, and I'm saying that the constitution says that it is the parent who confers citizenship on the child. So, but so if how you did have the, the document, the parent get the first ID card? If you don't how did the have, parent get oh the first God, ID card? God, God, I'm talking about the CR that is before parliament. Let me make, you say you're not arguing on the basis of law. I'm arguing on the basis of law. <laughs> Let me argue on the basis argue, of law. Argue, argue, argue. If you, the CIA that has been laid in parliament mm. takes off certain documents and makes only the ID card, the, mm. uh, the national ID card and the passport, and vouching. Mm. So if your parents don't have it, and you have it, and you register, you will now have the right to, authority vouch, to vouch for your parents. parents. Don't you see that you are telling the law? You are not conferring. You are not how, saying how that you, my parents how did you have are citizens of this country. How did you and have so you must get into it. <laughs> and I'm saying that the law doesn't say, the constitution doesn't say that. And I, don't, I won't argue like Bwabina Samoa. I am a lawyer first before a politician. <laughs> and now we'll work to uphold the, the law. The law you are espousing here. I will hold to uphold. I mean, I will. The I will law you are espousing here. The I mean, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but it's, a it's, total it's with the presumptive for yeah. you to suggest that yeah. uh, if the child vouches for their parents, then the child is conferring uh, citizenship on the parents. Yes, well, it's not presumptive. How do you get onto the register? You must be a citizen. So if, your if the child says, this is my father, that is how you can get onto the register. And you can only get onto the register if you're a citizen. How does the child say this is my father? Because he has got onto the register. How did the child get onto the register? Because he has an ID card. How did he get the ID card? Because he registered. How did he register? Ah, why? Uh, but the father, father was there. The father didn't did register. The father didn't did 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 register. So, all right, we are still exploring the compromise why? position. Why? Why? You have to have an election. We need to have a compromise so, so, position. So, so, the third thing is that, you know, Bobby Asamoa uh. has also be clouded the issue. Again, I told you. We are arguing about two different things. All the evidence and materials he read talked about equipment. Talked about equipment. But the NDC's key position is the data. The, the data. It's but the do we get the impression from the Electoral Commission, the constitutional the data is not that credible. they are seeking to destroy the, the existing data? The data is not data? credible. Yes, yes. What they are seeking to do, what Electoral Commission is seeking to do presently, 
is to take us back to 1992 and start the process afresh. And have a fresh base document. Yes. That's just what we're attempting to do. So there will be no compromise position what as far as the NDC? What's the compromise? We are saying that the compromise position is that, make, you see, we are deeply apprehensive. Because it is a letter commission that said to us that there is no way that they will use the national ID card for primary document for verification. It's there who told us that. That's the first time. The said, secretary said that, oh, registration is going to be easy. We're going to compile a register. And if you have a voter ID card and present it, we'll migrate you onto the new register. You won't even spend five minutes there. It is the Electoral Commission that says that, that said that. Mm. It is the Electoral Commission that said that this is our voters' register. It's credible. Uh, when did they say that? A bossman said it. Bossman. And I'm mentioning his name here. If, it, if, it, if he's listening and he says, I didn't say that, you should call him. He said that the Electoral Commission, the register is credible. So we're saying that. So how come that haven't told us all this. And it is the same uh, electoral commission hmm. who told us that the only reason why they were want, wanting to compile a new register was because the biometric finger verification is not foolproof. Some people do not get biometrically verified. So they want to add facial recognition. They use that as the basis for coming to us. Today, as we speak, there is no CI in Parliament or anywhere that is seeking to authorize the use of facial, facial recognition. So we see the information coming out from the EC can only be coming out from an EC that has been manipulated to the extent that they don't know what they're doing. Because you told us that you're not going to use NIE card. Now you, are, you said no, NIE, NIE card. You told us that if you have a voter ID card, that's what you are going to use. Now you say no. no. You said that you are going to do biometric, and you are going to do facial recognition. Today, and as a justification for the compilation, today there's nothing about facial recognition because you have not brought in the CI. So why do you think that we should trust that easy? When they have introduced so much inconsistency and controversy in what they are doing. This is the basis of our suspicion that someone, there's a long hand somewhere manipulating the EC. And why, why are we not entitled to come to that conclusion? 1992, that was the only time the commissioners of EC were appointed by a sitting president. We didn't have political parties. We appointed the commissioners. No, none of the succeeding presidents after Rawlings had opportunity to appoint all the commissioners. Today, today, all the commissioners have been appointed by Nana Kofado. That's why we believe that he only appointed... You have a problem with that? We have a problem. Then what's because, problem? again, the MPP in opposition, when Charlotte Mercer was being appointed... Charlotte Osei, you Charlotte, can't con Charlotte, conflate the two. Charlotte Osei, not two Mercer. individuals. Charlotte Osei was being uh, uh, appointed. Uh. MPP told President Mama and Ghanaians that, yes, they agree that the Constitution confers the right on the president to appoint the electoral commissioner. But they thought that to engender confidence in the electoral commission, the, your, uh, your mama must exercise that right in consultation with other stockholders. Because every people told us that. But he didn't. But what? He didn't. Mm -hmm. And when it came to that term, but they, they, they suggested that. When they had opportunity to appoint not one electoral commissioner, but electoral commissioners, they exercise it alone. Why don't we think that, why don't you think that alone? We, should, we, should, we should have How business you know suspended? Alone? And then that, this commission that they have appointed, have one commissioner tell us that NDC is a threat to the <laughs> can an uh, arbitrator come to the conclusion that one of the parties... But if you, if you say that you will resist with your blood, for well, example, the, you possibly the, the are threatening the, the processes the, that they the need to put in place for us to have an election. It's a veritable threat to the social cohesion of this country.
Honorable Abu Abiyan Sabah, uh, the EC is a, is a verifiable threat. Ver so, veritable. So, 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 Not verified, veritable. Veritable uh, threat to the social cohesion of this country. I assume he's arguing as a lawyer, yes. making those major assertions undermining an institution of state and probably the constitution itself. He has. I still want to explore let the compromise begin, position, let though. Me I mean. By going to the beginning hmm. where we started from, that the EC. Is a body of state and has a constitutional duty, and has a constitutional duty that the NDC and anybody else within the state has a right to engage, to think, to believe, to assert every at every opportunity, but that stops short of violence. That is their right, and it stops short of violence. That's why I went through the process of detailing, confronted by the same situation, what the MPP did, and which has helped to bring this nation to this point. Now, he talks about the constitution enabling a person to use physical, uh, 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 to, uh, physical what? What did you say, physical what? Resistance. Physical resistance. Where in the constitution? Well, article 3. Article 3. Read, read Article 3. Read Article 3 of the Constitution. Let me read it for can, you. Can, oh, please. Can I make please, my argument? I, I didn't want lawyer to Inusa, can I make my lawyer. argument? I didn't want to we all know what Article 3 is about. <laughs> I'm going there. It is armed resistance to people who overthrow the government. <laughs> so it's not, it's not an illegality. When you overthrow, overthrow the government, it's illegal. It's not illegal. When you overthrow the government, so it is illegal. It, it is so you are entitled. I am coming there. I am coming there. Uh, a person who alleges that, that, that is a person, <laughs> ah, but the circumstance is stated in the constitution. Nowhere does it empower you to overthrow an institution of state that is legitimately going about its business. So if, Nowhere. If you overthrow an institution of state, that an is enactment or anything contained in or done under the authority of that or any other enactment or any act or omission of any person is in oh. concern with or in contravention of the provision of this constitution, may bring an action in the oh, Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. That is 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two, two. The Supreme Court shall, for the purposes of a declaration under clause 1 of this article, make such orders and give such directions that may consider appropriate for giving effect or enabling effect to be given to the declaration so made. The power to keep this state stable is in the Supreme Court. Now, 3 Two, three. Any person or group of persons to whom an order or direction is addressed under clause two of this article by the Supreme Court shall duly obey and carry out the terms of the order or direction. So if you disagree with the Electoral Commission and you go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court tells you that, thank you very much, this is your position, I instruct the EC to do this. I instruct you to do this. You that sure is agree. what must be done. But the NDC is so, in so court, that's though. A, 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 NDC. Yeah, but that is why, that is that is why talk of blood. Article 3 for you. No? Article, article 3 of the yeah, Constitution. Article 3. Let me wait, read wait, it. Wait, no, no, wait. I can't wait. Okay, You've had your time. Okay, I am reading read Article 3 myself. Okay, read it, yeah. A parliament shall have no power to enact a law establishing a one-party state. Good. No parliament has done that. Article 3 now, any activity of a person or group of persons to suppress, or to to suppress the lawful political activity, activity of any other person or any class of persons yes. is generally unlawful. Who is suppressing your lawful political activity? Oh, read, who read, is suppressing read, your lawful read, political read, activity? Read, read, read. Any person who, by himself or in concert with others, by any violent or other unlawful means, mm -hmm. perhaps it's you. You go on, go on, go on. Go suspends, on. overthrows, or abrogates this constitution or any part of it, or attempts to do so. Any such act mm -hmm. or aids and abets any other in any manner any person referred to in paragraph A of this clause commits the offense of high treason and shall upon conviction be sentenced to death. Four, read four. So, so, four, so read who, four, who read is four. suppressing your read four. political activity read four. and who, who four, is four. using leave, leave and and threatening four. to use violent read means four. to control read the four. constitution? Four, four. All citizens of Ghana shall have the right and duty at all times. A. To defend this constitution and in particular to resist any person or group of persons seeking to commit any of the acts referred to in clause 3 of this article. What is you, the violent what is, people, what is, what is have a duty to be resisted. Whoa, so, what, what does clause, clause 3, three say? say? Clause 3 says that, wait, clause what 3 says that if any person who by himself uh -huh. or in concert with others uh -huh. by any violent means or by any violent or other unlawful means 
suspends or abrogates the constitution or any part of it or attempts so where is, to the, do so. Where is the violence and the unlawfulness you are talking about oh you don't see the violence where's the violence? the violence is the disenfranchisement oh please because it is the constitution go to court <laughs> you are determining what is violent think, and non-violent I, I think you are citing constitutional <laughs> reasons for trouble. something that is not that's my thinking that's my thinking, thinking. That's ah. thinking. Have you gone to the Supreme Court to say that somebody so, is committing so, so, an act so, against so, no, 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 <laughs> The key issue we're exploring is whether there, there will ever be a compromised position. You, you are, I mean, I could say the that the NDC has an entrenched position, EC has an entrenched position. Where do we go from there? It's law. I want to say something very, very important here. If we don't hunker down, and help the EC to do the right. We won't help the EC to do and the EC deliver, must do the right deliver an election. The EC must do the right thing. They know the right thing. 7 January 2021. I don't think the attitude of the NDC, as you are saying, compromise, can enact a compromise about the way forward because there is no clear way forward. Compromise is to do the now, right thing. The NDC is telling us that they have a right under Article 3. To resist. To resist violence. To resist. And they are not able to tell to us resist. where the violence is. They are violence telling us the about unlawfulness. Who establishes unlawfulness in this country? It's the Supreme Court, Article 2 <laughs> oh, yeah. of the Constitution. The Constitution makes hmm. its powers very, very clear. The preamble says the sovereignty is in the people. And it establishes the sources of authority. And the authority for determining who is being unlawful, who is undermining the Constitution, is squarely vested in the Supreme Court. And that's where it ends. When, when a group when, when are have, violent, when, have, when a group when are violent, able to, the you, Constitution says another group could resist them. What, what I'm saying who is, is being violent? Tell us. See, so can you answer you see, you see three the, questions the, for us, the NDC? One, are you going to ask your supporters to register? Two, if they register, will they take part, will in, they the take part in the vote? Three, what does resist with blood mean? Well, it's resist so, with so blood you have asked the question, let me for or against the 1992 so constitution. So, 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 so gentlemen, yeah, he, so, he, he, he directed a question, but we don't have a lot of time. Yes, so, yes, so, first, first of all, this, now let's conclude NDC, on this business NDC about the data. will participate you, in the exercise if the electoral commission introduces systems that do not seek determined by the NDC. That do not determined seek by the NDC. Franchise anybody. Then it's no. You won't participate. Two, if the system is so organized in such it's. a way that NDC comes to the conclusion that the system is unfair. The NDC is not a state. The NDC will advise itself. The NDC is the state. Three, where injustice becomes the rule, where the injustice against the party becomes a rule. Resistance becomes a duty. The NDC will advise itself. Steven. So, are you satisfied with the answers that he, he gave? They are very dangerous to the stability of the state. Inu Safuseni, lawyer, Inu Safuseni, prides himself on being a lawyer, has elevated the NDC above the state today. Today, Inu Safuseni is telling us that unless the Electoral Commission, which is empowered by law to deliver an election, that's what the NDC wants. They will not allow it to work. They will advise themselves. They are telling us that unless the Electoral Commission adopts their position on systems, right. on conduct uh, of the election, gentlemen, I know they that, uh, will not allow an election to take place in this country. The NDC wants to take us to pre-1992. Please, anybody who supports the NDC, your leadership is on a coalition course with the Constitution. Your leadership is on a coalition course with your peace of mind. Your leadership is on a coalition course with your way of life. Cut them adrift. You don't deserve this leadership. <laughs> let, me, let me take a closing you remark don't from deserve uh, this Honorable Nusafu Saidi. We've had quite a lot of discussion. You don't deserve this leadership. We need to figure out a way forward. They are adrift. And, and Cut we, them can't, off. we can't do all of that uh, well, today. Well. So I'll give you the closing remarks and then I'll also take a few well, uh, closing minutes remarks are from simple. you. Mm. Well, he says that the leadership are adrift. At least we have not yet killed our chairman. We know exactly. Yeah, is that law or politics? <laughs> well, you are mixed. Well, <laughs> I, I thought that when you were speaking, I was listening to you. Yeah, continue. 
And so I think that you'll be quite decent if you listen I'm to sorry. Me. We have not yet killed our chairman. Hmm. What we are simply saying is that there must be strong, cogent reasons for a departure, a departure from pre-existing norms. Certainty and predictability in the rule of law simply means that what people expect to be done ought to be done. That in a democratic country like ours, where people, the Constitution grants the right to every citizen to vote, the right to vote, and invest in that, in the Electoral Commission, the duty to register all citizens of the country, no attempt should be made to constrict the entry of people onto the register. We are saying that Electoral Commission has a unique opportunity to do what is fitting and proper in the circumstances. I have not said that if the Electoral Commission registers all the people and allows primary documents of the pre-existing primary documents to be used, all the people to get onto the register will be NDC. I have not said that. I'm saying that we should not encourage the suppression of voters in this country because people have a right to vote. And so if I say that and also say that I believe that if the Electoral Commission continues on the path that they are continuing, they would disenfranchise a lot of people. And I also hold the view that by reason of history of events in this country, the people who are likely to be disenfranchised are people that are of a certain stock. And that is already evident in the registration, in the NIA registration. If the NDC comes to the conclusion that the processes are not fair, transparent, and open to advise itself, to advise itself. right, Honorable Yabwabians, your closing remarks too. It's unfortunate. I have very little time to do the numbers argument, mm -hmm. but we will make it because numbers are being bandied about. But in truth, those numbers disadvantage the so-called MPP strongholds more than their so-called strongholds. We will make that number But words. now, oh please, closing remarks. Closing remarks. Not closing, remarks. closing remarks. Closing remarks. A political party is a creature of law. Yes. Its activity is defined in the constitution of the republic. It does not include disruption of the constitution. It says it shall be free to participate in shaping the political will of the people, disseminate information on political ideas, social economic programs of a national character. I want to repeat my admonition to those who have a love of the NDC as a political organization. At any point in time, its leadership changes. The people who believe in the NDC are being misled by a leadership which is confused at the moment. Please, they shouldn't accede to any agenda that seeks to undermine the life that this constitution has conferred on them. This is the fourth republic. Please, there's been a first republic, it was overthrown by the military. There's been a second republic, it was overthrown by the military. There's been a third republic, it was overthrown by the military. Anytime there's a military disruption of governance in this country, lives, people change. Forever. Never go back. Your right to work, all the rights you believe in, your human rights change. You don't have any. You don't have any. We have been fortunate to have a fourth republic which has lasted for 28 years. Please, protect it. Protect. Don't allow any misguided, deluded leader who will tell you that he is trying to protect your lifestyle by destroying the constitution and you follow that person he is actually destroying the nation right gentlemen i thank you very much yeah before we go since you are both member of parliament i quickly want to take your thoughts on the development with COVID 19 members and parliamentary staff were tested and there will be all sorts of uh, agitation over whether or not uh, results should be publicized etc i need your quick views on that uh, before uh, no the results up. cannot be publicized because the results are protected by the Data Protection Act. The 
health status of individuals of parliament mm. or any member of this country is protected. Irrespective of the fact that if, for example, uh, MPs knew their status and were public about it, no, no, no. we'll be helping fight it, it, stigma. The, the laws of the country simply protect those information unless that person mm. consents the inf information being public. The only thing that can be done is health authorities have a duty to ensure that if the results are indeed true, steps mm. are taken to prevent and contain the spread mm. of the virus. Majority leader said they have not received the result, but the minority no, they, they, said is not being candid. Contradicted it's not being that. candid. The, the thing is that the health authorities in the, at Parliament briefed the leadership of the House of what was emerging mm. from the samples of members of parliament and other staff taken to ascertain whether they had the COVID virus or not. Oh, no. And somehow, it was not intended to be leaked, but somehow it got leaked to the public. But this was consequent upon a brief by the, medical, the resident medical doctor in parliament to the leadership of parliament. But you can't make the names of those people uh, public because they is protected. Mm. All right, honorable uh, Yabwa, we answer more. It's under normal circumstances. I agree with him all the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when he's being normal, not like now. <laughs> it's, it's because there are protocols. And he stated it clearly. The law. So in doing the test, the medical authorities follow the law by establishing protocols. So their duty is to isolate and track whoever and make sure that the rest of us are adequately protected. But you don't think that parliament, parliament will do us a lot of good if uh, they own up to, where, to where, this and where I help sit, fight stigma? Where I sit, I am not part of leadership. I don't know what has happened there. You can have a situation where an individual announces their status. It is their right. Mm. Because then they would be disclosing it themselves. Mm. It's not against the rules. But you can't compel that disclosure. Uh, uh, in public. Yeah, you, you don't think going into an election, if, for example, an MP tests positive and he's going for re-election and he announces, then that's his uh, oh, political but ambition but going please. down the drain. <laughs> what, what, is of the, what is the protocol involved in this? It's, you see, that's part of the stigmatization. <laughs> that's part of the stigmatization. <laughs> that makes him so fearful. <laughs> you see, you see uh, and I'm happy that you've said this. That's part of the reason why I stand with Parliament that every MP must test. Mm. Yes. And I even we stand with Parliament that uh, we have tested. Yes. yes, I stand with Parliament that we should be given passports. <laughs> that is, if you test, mm. they should give an indication. So no, you tested. Mm. I stand with that. Mm. But you see, what you have just said is the reason why many members of Parliament are not submitting themselves mm. because the people are, are strong enough. People are so, so, uh, <laughs> people are afraid that when they test and the results, whether the results are negative or positive, <laughs> they, will, they will use it, especially right, not right. for progress. <laughs> Gentlemen, nice to have you on uh, Key Points. I'm Stephen Angie. We've had an interesting like conversation. Is that why you're not running for parliament? <laughs> <laughs> I've been speaking with Honorable Yapwabia Samoa and Honorable Inusa Fusaini. We'll take